Attention Gorehounds! 2019 was a year that brought us plenty of sinister thrillers and chillers, so we thought we'd point out a few creep shows that really demand your attention. Get ready to scream your heart out, because these are the most disturbing movies of 2019. It's easy to forget now, but just a few short years ago, no one really knew who Robert Eggers was. That changed overnight in 2016 upon the release of the nerve-shattering gothic folktale The Witch, a film that comes highly recommended for fans of arthouse horror. After The Witch, fans were eager to see what Eggers would conjure up next, including actors Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson. In fact, they both reportedly reached out to Eggers and expressed interest in jumping on his next project, whatever that might be. Perhaps they regretted the decision upon arrival on the set of The Lighthouse, as the film's icy shoot in Nova Scotia was reportedly a challenging one. And make no mistake, The Lighthouse is an extremely challenging film. I'm damn well wedded to this here light. We'll keep our lips sealed on all major twists and turns of the plot, because the less you know going in, the better. We will say that this is a story about a pair of lighthouse keepers who are doing whatever they can to stay sane on an increasingly mystifying New England island in the 1890s. Eggers' latest is undoubtedly one of the weirdest films of 2019. It may also be one of the best. Todd Phillips' dark, stylish Joker finally gives everyone's favorite supervillain an origin story, and a highly disturbing one at that. In a standout performance that's already drawing award nominations, Joaquin Phoenix plays Arthur Fleck, a social outcast who suffers from narcissistic delusions. All too soon, those delusions give way to horrific bursts of violence. The film is arguably even darker than any installment of Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, calling to mind Gritty Martin's Scorsese classics like Taxi Driver and The King of Comedy. <laughs> There's no arguing that Philip's tale of a deranged stand-up comic is hopelessly bleak, and critics spilled gallons of ink writing about the film's excessive violence. But perhaps the most disturbing aspect of Joker is how it succeeds in holding up a funhouse mirror to our own troubled times. Beneath all the grease paint, the story of Arthur Fleck is one you wouldn't be surprised to see on the evening news. It's a timely, cautionary tale, and it hits hard. In the summer of 2018, Ari Aster unleashed the unholy horror film Hereditary upon unsuspecting audiences. And in the summer of 2019, he delivered his latest experiment in terror. The fact that Midsommar is mostly set in broad daylight certainly doesn't detract from the horror. In fact, in several key scenes, it is the horror. According to Aster, Midsommar is just a small film about an unhealthy relationship that goes up in flames. And that's an apt description, at least on paper. The doomed couple in question visits the Swedish village's Midsummer Festival. Their adventure eventually turns into a full-fledged waking nightmare that gives the Wicker Man a run for its money. Soon enough, they find themselves hopelessly adrift in the darkest margins of the occult. We'll go ahead and say it. This is folk horror at its most folked up. What is it? It has special properties. <laughs> What am I going through? Of course, Midsommar is a breakup movie only in the way that Hereditary is a family drama. And rest assured, every evil under the sun is on full display here. If you've yet to see the film, you should know that it's often unbearably gory. Brace yourself for plenty of shocking sights that you simply can't unsee, popcorn not included. This just might be the scariest, most hallucinatory film of the year. Consider yourself warned. With Depraved, underground filmmaker Larry Fessenden gives us a modern-day retelling of the Frankenstein story. The plot is a very familiar one. A determined doctor cobbles together several stray body parts to give life to an undead something or other. Rest assured, this film is fueled by enough blood and gore to satisfy even the most discerning horror fan. But thanks to deeply human characters and an inventive and insightful script, Depraved is far more nuanced and affecting than you might expect. In my dreams from someone else. I owe you something like a normal life. In this impressively twisted film, even the noblest intentions can be corrupted, and men and monsters are often one in the same. One part monster movie, one part character drama, Depraved explores heavy themes like post-war trauma and mental illness, but it remains first and foremost a horror story, a really messed up one. Two years have passed since Andy Muschietti unleashed It Chapter 1 on an unsuspecting public. The film certainly succeeded in scaring the bejesus out audiences. It also scared up $700 million worldwide at the box office. Suffice to say, expectations were high for Chapter 2 of this monstrously frightening clown epic. And we're here to tell you that, yes, It Chapter 2 is every bit as unsettling as its predecessor. Bill Skarsgård's absolutely mental take on Pennywise is still very much the star of the show, though he's got some stiff competition 
Hamilton thanks to Bill Hader and Jessica Chastain, both of whom turn in powerhouse performances. Its chapter 2 definitely delivers the unbridled terror that you so desperately crave, and it amps up the emotional stakes at every turn, leading to quite a gut punch of an ending. For 27 years, I craved you. I missed you. It's that rare sort of horror film that aims to shock you and pull at your heartstrings, and it succeeds brilliantly. Set in Paris in the summer of 79, Jan Gonzalez's Knife and Heart tells the story of Anne, a filmmaker who specializes in arty adult films of the all-male persuasion. But just as Anne begins her most ambitious film to date, the members of her troupe start getting killed off one by one. She suddenly finds herself smack dab in the middle of a twisted, heartbreaking mystery that effectively turns her whole world upside down. Gonzalez delivers a LGBTQ-centric, truly unique slasher that pulls no punches. It's certainly not for the squeamish, but adventurous horror fans will definitely want to take a look. Wounds tells the story of a cocksure French Quarter bartender named Will, played by Army Hammer. After he takes home a phone that was left at his bar, his life begins to get a whole lot weirder. And when he starts texting the stranger on the other end and exploring the highly unsettling contents of the phone itself, things take a turn for the truly terrifying. As Will and his girlfriend Carrie, played by Dakota Johnson, start to unravel the mystery behind the mysterious smartphone, the film plunges us deeper into a devilish and depraved narrative that owes as much to David Cronenberg as it does to H.P. Lovecraft. And we don't make those comparisons lightly. There was a ritual. Based on a bizarre and macabre true story, Laws of Chaos revolves around a seriously troubled Norwegian teen who called himself Euronymous and created what he called true Norwegian black metal with his band Mayhem. In attempting to bring Mayhem to the masses, Euronymous and his pals engaged in a wave of shocking publicity stunts that shook Norway to its very core. Mayhem's live shows soon became the place to see severed pig heads, fire-breathing maniacs, and bloody acts of self-mutilation. As Euronymous and his crew continue to push one another, the lines between act and reality dissolve, paving the way for arson, violence, and death. Lords of Chaos tells a story that feels way too strange to be true, but it's entirely based in fact. For his part, director Jonas Ackerland allows the increasingly grisly tale to speak for itself, and he seems to take no particular delight in presenting the most shocking aspects of the case at hand. Ultimately, this is haunting biographical drama about artistic ambition run amok. Add Joe Bigo's beastly flick Bliss to the list of vampire tales, reclaiming the genre's menacing grandeur, even if the word vampire is never actually uttered in the film. Set among the venomous vistas of modern-day Los Angeles, Bliss finds a tragically self-centered painter stuck in a maddening creative block, and in debt to some serious shakers in a superficial LA art world. In desperate need of inspiration, she turns to a powerful hallucinatory drug, and with a little help from her soulless gal pal, she quickly spirals into a blood-soaked nightmare of lust, death, and yes, creation. I don't know, something came over me and then it all just started pouring out of me. I don't even remember doing it. The results are spellbindingly sick and twisted, and unbelievably gory to boot. Set in Mexico amid the turmoil of the country's violent drug wars, Issa Lopez's pitch black fantasy Tigers Are Not Afraid tells the story of a little girl named Estrella, whose mother has mysteriously disappeared. One day, to soothe Estrella after gunfire is heard outside her classroom, a teacher gives her three pieces of chalk and says that they can magically grant her three wishes. Accompanied by a band of fellow orphans, Estrella adjusts to the perpetual dangers of a new life, and comes to realize that those three wishes may actually be real. Of course, wishes rarely come true in the way you expect. The film is a pitch-perfect, relentlessly bleak chiller that's as insightful as it is creepy. Edgy, emotional, and deeply moving, Tigers Are Not Afraid will linger in your head long after the credits roll. Some people might not even consider Amanda Kramer's Lady World a movie at all. It's more of an experimental mood piece about the fragility of human nature and social structures. After being cut off from the world in the wake of an unknown natural disaster, a group of teenage girls are going positively mad. The film borrows heavily from William Golding's 1954 novel Lord of the Flies, essentially moving the plot from an isolated island paradise to the suffocating confines of an apartment. Rest assured, you can look forward to plenty of backstabbing and torture, both of the emotional and physical variety. You are a bad leader, and we were never friends. The claustrophobic photography and wildly offbeat sound design is bound to keep viewers very much on edge. Featuring a stellar ensemble cast, this film is definitely its own beast, and that beast has one hell of a bite. 
It's safe to say that Zach Lipovsky and Adam B. Stein's outrageous sci-fi film Freaks is unlike anything you've ever seen before. And take our word for it. This film has plenty of surprises in store for you, so do your best to avoid any spoilers before giving it a look. Think you already have a good sense of what Freaks is all about because you watched the trailer? Think again. Freaks is a story of a bold little girl, played by newcomer Lexi Kolker, who's been raised in captivity by her overprotective father, played by Emile Hirsch. When she tries to make a break for it, she soon discovers that the world isn't all what she thought it was. In fact, it might be a far more dangerous place than she could have ever imagined. You could buy any flavor you wanted with that. Really? Yeah. Come around back. Come inside and taste any flavor you want. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite films are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.